work has not been properly addressed in a more simple format, which is how do you take dog photos effectively, and how to properly utilize your camera and audio equipment. Bless you. Um, but without further ado, let's jump right into it. Firstly, let's talk about the camera I'm using. So today we're using a Canon 1000D, which is a particularly great camera to use. I use it because it's cheap. I'll also have all links to all the equipment I'm using in the description below. Alright, so let's start with turning the camera on. Make sure you give it a second to wake completely up before continuing. When it comes to knowing what setting to use, I personally like to use sports mode because it's particularly good at capturing those fast moments that don't really ever tend to last long. So, I highly recommend sticking with that. However, I'm not against using portrait mode. This is still really good, it helps with focusing and depth, um, and it just makes details stand out a lot more like the eyes, it can really bring out certain features like that. Now, when it comes to adjusting the focus of your camera, there are two options, there's the automatic version, and then there's the manual. For the manual option, all you have to do is rotate the lens until your object becomes in focus. However, no one uses the manual option, so let's stick with the automatic. And to activate the automatic function, all you need to do is press lightly on the photo taking button and it will automatically adjust the lens for you. Okay, since we're all familiar with the camera now, let's dive into how we can use colour and setting to make a better camera shot. So, when it comes to setting, it mainly has to do with colour, because you're generally unable to see what's in the background, because the image is usually blurred or just unclear to the viewer. However, you should still try and incorporate a unique and creative setting, and most of the time, the best settings are literally right next to you. For example, all my shots are taken in my backyard. The reason why I do this is because I've got the colours I want. I've got those reddish colours from the green and blue colours, all of which are colours that really make my model stand out. So definitely try and utilise all these different factors as much as you can within your shots, because it will ultimately lead into a much more intriguing and interesting picture. Now let's move on to talking about the model, or the dog. It can be really hard to make them follow instructions. And I will admit, not all dogs are the best at following instructions. Take for example, this guy. Yeah, he's a bit of a troublemaker and seriously does not listen to a word I say. Which is kinda why Shadow's the star of this video, but we still love him. However, the best way to cope with this issue is by making sure the dog is having fun. This is generally quite an easy step to do, because all you have to do is just praise your dog by giving it lots of pats, or by incorporating its like favourite toy. So try and use elements like that in order to create a better picture and better environment for your dog just to be in. Nevertheless, another trick which you can use is by giving the dog treats. However, I am against this, because I do find it tends to pull the dog away from the camera. And I always find my dog doesn't want to pay attention because it's just solely focused on the food. But this technique can work, especially when it comes to drawing the dog's attention to the camera lens. However, I find using trigger words a bit easier. For example, with Shadow, I use the trigger word frog, which makes her tilt her head and look directly at my face. And my face is often where the camera is, so she'll always look directly into it. One thing you should definitely try and teach your dog is how to get them to stay in one spot. You should be able to leave the dog alone and leave the setting, and they should be able to come back at your demand. For example, the words I use for Shadow to get her to stay is simply just stay, and I'll point to where I want her to stay and she'll walk over and move to it. Once I'm happy with the shot I've got, I'll simply just tell Shadow, good girl, and then she can go off and do her own thing again. Finally, when it comes to taking photos of your dog, you definitely want to capture as much of your dog's unique personality as possible. The first thing you should do is to bring yourself down to the dog's level. This helps with creating a far more natural and pleasant focal point, as the dog's not having to look up the whole time. So definitely bring yourself down to the dog's point of view. Secondly, make sure the dog is having fun, because there is nothing worse than having a grumpy dog in your photos. But what exactly do I mean by this? By making sure your dog is enjoying the whole photo shooting experience, it can make it a lot more easier for you and your dog to communicate, as the dog will be more willing to follow instructions and will be less likely to walk away. So it is definitely important to keep your dog's mood up. And lastly, the final thing I'd like to address is how you should be incorporating your dog's unique abilities within your photos. Now, this can range from a massive variety of different things, as some dogs are able to stick their tongue out really far or bring their ears right up, 
Now it might take a while to find out what your dog's unique ability is, so definitely try and look into it and maybe look into what other people think or like about your dog, and then try and incorporate that into your photos. A great example on how to utilise your dog's unique ability is how I like to make the most of Shadow's ability to do backflips or fly as I say. So I definitely like to make the use of this ability that Shadow has as much as possible as it makes photos of her stand out a lot more against other people's photos. And they are generally just a lot more fun and interesting photos to look at. And that was my final thing to say, so this brings me to the end of my video. So I hope it has helped you in learning how to use a camera to take dog photos more efficiently. Hey guys, thank you for watching. Feel free to check out some of my other videos over here. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe and comment. Also you can follow me on my social medias over here.